Hello everyone. Once, a close friend of mine who loves fishing came to me with a request to repair an old flashlight. When I asked, why do you need it? Throw it away, buy a new one, he replied, I can't, it holds a lot of memories. Of course, I couldn't refuse, so I offered to completely redo the insights with something more modern. And I must say, he agreed reluctantly, even though I, of course, didn't ask him for any money. After all, he's a close friend. The first step was the cleaning process. The flashlight was in terrible condition. Apparently, it's Japanese. Although the Chinese, when making it, could have written anything. Inside, there was even a set of four batteries. The year 2007. Naturally, the condition was terrible. And therefore, immediate disposal. Inside, the flashlight was completely messed up with substances leaking from the batteries. I cleaned it with all the means I had at hand. After some time, the flashlight was almost completely clean, both inside and out. More or less. By the way, this flashlight is based on an incandescent bulb with volts. Now let's put all this aside and think about the redesign. Well, you don't have to be a genius to figure out replacing the incandescent bulb with an LED. Batteries with a lithium-ion battery. This is a classic move, and I have no desire to do anything extraordinary. After all, this isn't my flashlight, and I can't implement my wild ideas. The owner might suspect that I'm a tech freak. I thought a lot about the LED. Initially, I wanted to fit it in here. These kinds of diode lamps from car headlights. But with the flashlight's original reflector, they just didn't work. To align. Plus, these lamps, besides the natural white light, give off a slight blue tint. Then I wanted to try installing a large number of 5mm bright LEDs with optics, but later I abandoned this idea in favor of an LED. Pre-XML T6, which I have worked with multiple times and only have good impressions of. On AliExpress, for less than 200 rubles, I bought a set consisting of the LED itself on a round aluminum substrate with a diameter of 20mm, a driver, and a reflector, or as the Chinese call it, a lens. I think it's clear that for such a price, you can't buy an original LED from the company Cree, and here you get such a package. This sample is most likely a copy. I checked some of its characteristics, and overall, everything is not bad. The LED was overclocked to 10 watts, and during the tests, it operated in this mode for about 20 minutes. It survived, and overall, no deterioration in characteristics was observed. Regarding the original Cree XML T6 LEDs. These are quite good matrices that are often used in LED flashlights. One of the inexpensive and successful LEDs from Cree. The beam angle is 125 degrees. The luminous flux is 120 lumens per watt. The nominal power of the matrix is 2 watts, but it can be overclocked to 10 watts, although it's not recommended as it leads to deterioration in characteristics. Some might say that too. Watts is not much, but here you have an ultra-bright LED plus a driver. It is overclocked to about 6 to 7 watts. So the light is quite decent. The driver itself is a compact board. In general, this set is intended for some kind of flashlight, hence the size. The power contacts of the driver are gold-plated, but most likely it's pseudo-gold plating. According to the seller, the driver's power is about 9 watts, but to get ahead, I'll say that's how much it consumes at the input. Such a driver works with a lithium battery, or with an assembly of such batteries connected in parallel. The main thing is that the supply voltage should not exceed volts. The board is a full-fledged current stabilizer and works overall. Well, but it has one drawback, it heats up a lot. We will return to this problem a little later. I also forgot to mention the most important thing. The driver is based on a microcontroller and has several operating modes, specifically five. The first mode is maximum brightness, consuming about 9 watts from the source. The second mode is about 4 watts. And the third mode is 1 watt. And then come the things I don't like. Strobe light and SOS signal. The flashlight's original reflector was slightly modified. A new one was installed right in it. And all of this is secured with epoxy. The LED will heat up significantly and without additional cooling. It's unavoidable. I found this kind of heatsink. 
Most likely, it was pulled from some ancient motherboard. It's quite sufficient for my LED. I ran the LED at maximum power for more than 20 minutes. And during this time, the heatsink temperature did not exceed 60 degrees. Additionally, this radiator has mounting tabs, making it easy to secure. I drilled a couple of holes in the flashlight's original reflector. Anyway, it no longer plays any role. Next, a couple of screws and the radiator is securely fixed. LED. Mopresk. Also, it's essential to smear the LED space with thermal paste. After checking, we'll set this part aside and work on the battery. The battery, of course, will be lithium-ion. 418650 standard cells with a capacity of 2000 milliamp hours. Each were purchased. All the batteries in our project will be connected in parallel. This way, we'll get one battery with a capacity of 8000 milliamp hours and a voltage of V. The batteries were installed in the appropriate holders, and then all that's left is to connect them. We'll connect them using the method of spot welding with nickel strips. The battery is ready. Now we need to think about the charging and protection system for the battery. I remind you that all the cells are connected in parallel. This is equivalent to one powerful battery. In this case, balancing the cells is not necessary. And please don't write otherwise. In this assembly, the voltage on all the batteries will naturally be the same. So, for such a battery, only a protection system is needed. In general, I didn't slack off and made this. On this board, there is both protection and a charging system. In short, I didn't overcomplicate things and went with the traditional method. The charging is handled by the good old TP4056 chips. Yes, it's a linear charging principle and the chips will heat up. But many of us eagerly buy such boards because they are convenient, cheap, and the TP4056 chip charges the battery using the correct method with stable current and voltage. One chip can charge a battery with a maximum current of 1 amp. That's clearly not enough. Our battery is quite capacious and the charging process would be long in that case. That's why I connected three chips in parallel. They operate at their limit, but they manage. The maximum charging current is 3 amps. This is enough to fully charge the battery in about 3 hours. You can charge this system with any 5 volt charger from a modern smartphone. However, the charger needs to be powerful, with an output current of 3 amps or more. You can use any other 5 volt adapter with the necessary output current. The protection is also classic, the DW01 chip, and a series of MOSFETs. I won't dwell on this as I've made two videos on the topic. In the first, I explained how such protection works, and in the second, I suggested a protection circuit option for high capacity lithium batteries. Links will be in the description. Such protection disconnects the battery during deep discharge, overcharge, and short circuits. In this case, the protection activation current is somewhere around 8A. So this board is an equivalent of that one. This one also has a charging and protection system, but our version is about three times more powerful. There are also indicator LEDs that show the charging status. When the battery voltage reaches about, the charging stops. Short circuits. Our system handles them perfectly as well. Everything works as intended. Regarding the driver that overheated at maximum power, this is generally normal as it is designed to work in flashlights with a metal casing. And ground, the driver's ground plane is pressed against the casing, the positive to the battery, and heat is dissipated from the board. In our case, it's different, and the board, roughly speaking, will be hanging in the air. I made the heat dissipation in a simple way. A copper tape, which is soldered to the driver's ground plane. The tape itself is glued to the flashlight casing with epoxy resin. Thanks to 
the large area of the tape, this heat dissipation is quite effective. After this, the problem with the driver's overheating is no longer relevant. Charging connector. Initially, I wanted to use a regular micro USB, but then I preferred a round connector. After all, it is more reliable. I also had to make a special cable for charging from standard chargers with a USB output. The cable is sturdy with a decent gauge wire, as the charging current will be around 3A. I also had to replace the original switch with another one, as it was faulty. Initially, I foolishly installed a regular button without a latch, but then of course I replaced it with a proper switch. I also wanted to make several holes in the case for natural cooling, but the owner asked to leave it as is, since the flashlights might be used in dusty and damp conditions. The battery was attached using double-sided Velcro and glue, just in case. Overall, when it comes to modifying flashlights of this class, it's not worth the effort. The flashlight is cheap, and the internals, batteries, LEDs, and other components cost more than a new flashlight that will shine just the same. Doing this is only worth it in rare cases, and this particular case is one of them. There are things we are attached to, and we don't want to part with them. In any case, the flashlight has gained a new life. It shines much brighter than before. The internals are completely different. High capacity lithium batteries and the ability to recharge. Three main brightness modes. And a strobe feature for the apocalypse. With that, this video comes to an end. Rate it, share it with your friends. And if you have any questions related to electronics, ask them in our official group. Well, as always, this was Kasianaka with you, and until next time, goodbye.